everybody, welcome to another episode of Rec Rotator Cup Expert. Um, so as you can see, we're in a different place. Uh, my uh, son's uh, fall break is this week, and so we're gonna do a video or two from uh, sunny Florida. So if you can guess where this is in Florida, um, within, let's say 10 miles or so, uh, I'll give you a Amazon gift card. Please excuse any uh, noise around me because I actually can't control the noise since we're in Florida. So we're here, and today we're gonna talk about anchors. Right, and I, it's almost fitting, right? We're at the beach, you can see the palm trees in the background, right there. When you think about anchors, we think about the big things that they throw in the ocean or the lake that holds the boat where it's supposed to be. Well, in the rotator cuff land, um, there are anchors, but they're different kind of anchors. They're more like the anchors that you would put in the wall to kind of hold something in place. Oftentimes, an, an anchor in, in orthopedics, specifically in the rotator cuff, we, it's more, we call a corkscrew anchor, which means it doesn't really look like a corkscrew, but it is a threaded anchor, an anchor that you somehow make a hole in the bone, whether it's a pilot hole, in, in anybody who's sort of handy, they've done this at home, you know, a little small hole in the wall, in the drywall, and then you screw something in, and then it becomes an anchor. And that's really what an anchor is in orthopedics, an anchor that goes into typically the greater tuberosity. So most of the time when you're doing a rotator cuff repair, the rotator cuff that's torn is a supraspinatus. So most of the time, we will put that in the greater tuberosity. The, the infraspinatus, which is a muscle right behind the rotator cuff, a supraspinatus muscle or tendon, is the infraspinatus. And so sometimes that's part of the greater tuberosity too. For simplicity's sake, they're all kind of the same thing in general. We put a rotator, we put an anchor, we put a little pilot hole, put the anchor in, the anchor screws in, the anchor has suture, so it has some sort of string, so to speak, that we then we, in whatever fashion we prefer, we put through the rotator cuff and then we tie the rotator cuff back down. Oftentimes an anchor is, historically would be metal, uh, and so we can see that on x-rays, we can see where the anchor is, and over the last, I don't know, probably 15, 20 years, we don't really use anchors that are metal. We use anchors that are made of something else. We can made, make anchors of plastic. And so the plastic is the same thing, it has a corkscrew design. You screw them in, the sutures ha are there, it passes them. And then there are some bioabsorbable anchors too. And those bioabsorbable anchors will dissolve over time, which theoretically is a better thing because we don't have a big piece of metal in there forever. We have a um, anchor that goes away. Um, and then sometimes actually now, and although not so much in rotator cuff, sometimes we have all suture anchors, anchors that kind of we put in there and the way that pulls out becomes a big ball, uh, a, kind of a knot in the bone and so it doesn't come back out. That's usually not what we use for rotator cuff. Sometimes we do that for labrums. And then people say, well, how many anchors should I have? Well, regardless of the anchor, oftentimes we'll have for depending on the tear the tear size, right? If you have a small tear, usually one anchor in the middle of the greater tuberosity, and then we pull the rotator cuff back down. Sometimes if we have a bigger tear, we might have two anchors in the greater tuberosity. If it's a bigger tear, requires us to have more sutures coming in to repair it. And then actually within anchors, we say how many sutures do we have. So occasionally we might use a, an anchor that has one suture, but that's rare. So usually we have anchors that have two sutures. I actually prefer in my practice, I usually prefer three three sutures with an anchor. So that means three threads, but that also means actually, so we have one that's going in and we have another tail that's somewhere else out here. So that's actually, in the end, it's six suture ends when we fix it. Um, so that's a lot of suture, right? And then if we have two, two of them, obviously that's 12 suture threads in the end. So typically, in my experience, but everybody's a little bit different surgical wise, so if I have two, a two anchor repair, most of the time, not all of the time, most of the time, then we'll talk about doing a lateral row. So if we look at the rotator cuff footprint, right? So that's where the rotator cuff attaches to the bone. So we have medial side, so the inner side, so if this is the socket, right? So this is the socket. And so this is the closer to the socket, we call the medial side. And this is the farther away from the socket, we call the lateral side. So if we, have, if we have a big rotator cuff tear, the rotator cuff will have a medial row of anchor, anchors, usually two or three or whatever, but you should, if we're gonna do this double row kind of anchor, so we have more than one row, so we might have 
two here and one back here, or three here and two back here, so whatever. But so we have a meter row of anchors that we pass the suture. So let's say, for instance, the typical time that I would use a double row repair would be, if we have two anchors, two anchors with two or three sutures each, and they go through the rotator cuff and they attach the medial side. So we have this lateral side still not attached and the sutures from the medial side then will pass through the lateral row, which would be on the outside. And the lateral row helps pull down the, the rotator cuff and actually reattach it more, we call increase the surface area, right? Because we have the medial row and we have the lateral row, and so we have a better surface area of the rotator cuff back down. So theoretically, you, you could have one anchor repair for a small tear. You could have a two anchor repair for a small medium tear. You could have a three anchor repair if you have two double, two rows in the inside, in, or medial side, and one row on the outside. So you have three or four or five, and then if you get into other tears, you have a tear of the the subscapularis in the front, then you might have one or two anchors there. The number of anchors that you have really depends on the actually the composition of your repair right how bad your tear is how bad the tendon is not just where how big it is but how bad it is which are not the same thing which we'll talk about in another video and we, kind of where the repair is and whether or not we want a double row or a, double, a single row and so the number of anchors really depends on your quality of how big your tear is and the quality of tendon and what the rotator cuff uh, allows us to do and what your surgeon wants to do so if we think about how many anchors should you have, you should have just enough, right? You should have enough to repair the rotator cuff in a way that will heal. And that's really crucial because we know that rotator cuffs typically are not the most, they don't have the most ability to heal. So we need to make sure the best we can to repair them. And then we can talk about what you put on top, but that's not for today, that's for another discussion. So how many anchors should you have? Well, you should have at least one if you're a rotator cuff tear, most likely. The number of anchors depends on how big your tear is. So if you have a say, seven anchor tear, well, your surgeon is involved with the anchor salesman, right? And they get extra, I'm just joking. That's not, should not be true anyway. The typical small tear would be one or two. A big tear would be two or three. Massive tear, more than that. But when we get to massive tear, then as surgeons, we have to think, we should we do something else? Should we be doing an SCR? Should we be doing a reverse total shoulder? Should we do some sort of graft? So I hope this helps a little bit. So typically anchors used to be metal, typically not metal, although lateral rows sometimes have a little bit of metal, but mostly still still plastic. We have plastic anchors that don't dissolve. We have plastic anchors that have a bioabsorbable component that will dissolve over time. Please subscribe to the channel. Please send any comments below and uh, hopefully we'll see you next time and maybe i'll do another one from this beautiful destination i don't know it's pretty hot i'm sweating right now maybe not thank you so much for watching thank you much for your support don't forget our uh, website we'll give all the links below and we'll see you next time thanks